Good morning. <laughs> I'd like to say good morning to all who are joining us here. For those who are in attendance, I'd like to welcome all of our visitors. Those who are online, uh, we like to let our visitors know that you are welcomed and honored guests. Um, it's such a blessing to be in the Lord's day and an honor to share a portion of God's word with you here this morning as we delve into the scriptures to see what we can learn from God. Amen. Amen. So our lesson here this morning, we will be talking about the blessings of obeying the Lord as we continue our lessons and in looking into the face of Jesus. This morning, we'll be talking about the blessings of obeying the Lord. Uh, the majority of the text will be taken from Matthew chapter 19 and 20. Um, chapter 19 and 20. Um, just like to um, acknowledge that excellent lesson Brother Chris did last week as well. And Brother Craig as well on Wednesday. Excellent lessons. And this lesson here is going to move us into chapter 20. Just going to take a few points from uh, Matthew chapter 19 and then we'll go away to uh, chapter 20. You know, at times we will hear a question that comes up, you know, oftentimes in casual conversation uh, with a loved one during an online chat, or maybe even in a Bible study from someone who is outside of Christ seeking to learn more about God. Or perhaps maybe we will hear this question from someone who has just obeyed the gospel. And that question is, what is the reward for following Jesus? Now, as we ponder that question, I will pose a few more questions. Are there any rewards that are present in this world for obeying the Lord? What is the difference between the final reward for someone who follows Christ at a young age and someone who starts their service later in life? These questions will serve as a basis for our study uh, this morning as we study the blessings of obeying the Lord. So let's look at uh, some of the rewards here for following Christ. Uh, let's look at just a few rewards. Uh, turn with me if you are able to Matthew chapter 19, and we'll be reading verse 27. Matthew 19 and verse 27. If I could get a reader there for verse 27. <clears throat> Then after Peter and Stephen, we follow them. We have to obey them all. What does that mean? Amen. Amen. So now we have to keep in mind that these are following passages um, of scripture that come after Jesus spoke to the rich young ruler. And we see here, Peter says, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Now, there was nothing wrong, of course, with Peter asking this question. After all, along with the other apostles, um, after all, Peter, along with the other apostles, had, in fact, given up all. Um, they had left their previous lives. They had left their jobs, their, their um, way of means of living, their households to follow Christ, and he genuinely wanted to know. Of course, with patience, Jesus would go on to give an answer in verses 28 through 30. Uh, if I could read 28 through 30. So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or land for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. Thank you. So there's a couple of these scriptures here. Um, here we see Jesus answering the questions with several different answers. Uh, first, we see that he mentioned a specific reward for the apostles. He says they will sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel, verse 28. Now, what does that mean? 
There are a couple of thoughts uh, and ways to view this, depending on what um, Jesus means when he says this would happen in the regeneration. Uh, this Greek word is only mentioned one time uh, in the Bible where it's referring to baptism, um, which is found in Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. The regeneration Christ speaks of uh, could mean two different times. Uh, one, the end of time when Christ returns and man is resurrected will be a different uh, generation or regeneration. The second involves the period of time between Pentecost and the second coming of Christ, referring to the time of the church when we are all to be new creatures. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17, Galatians six, verse 15. A part of a new generation or regeneration. It is at this time that Jesus will be sitting on his throne of glory. Uh, we also wanna note that the apostles have thrones, uh, but not thrones of glory like Christ. And they will be judging the 12 tribes through their words since they have laid the foundation of God's will. Uh, this explanation is most likely uh, correct because it makes sense and fits with the only other use of the word, the word translated regeneration in the Bible. Uh, Brother Greg. You know, also, actually, the Bible says that you can Tough passage there. Twelve tribes <laughs> talked about uh, different things and the rewards that, that one would uh, receive for following Christ, obeying Christ. And thank you, brothers, for clearing that, clearing that up, and adding more to it. Uh, any more comments or questions before we move on? Yeah. Uh, Brother Greg. All right. So there are blessings for everyone who follows the Lord. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, Matthew 19, uh, 29 here again, and then we'll turn over to Mark uh, 29, verse 30. Uh, we'll read verse 30 and see how it's translated from Mark's point of view. So in verse 39, Jesus says, if you give up everything for his name's sake, we shall receive a hundredfold and shall inher inherit everlasting life. Uh, let's read what Mark's account says in chapter 10 and verse 30. Turn with me to Mark 10 and verse 30. <laughs> so here in Mark's account, chapter 10, verse 30, the Bible says, but he shall receive a hundredfold now at this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions, and in the world to come eternal life. Now, what is, what is Jesus referencing here in the scripture, Mark 10, verse 30? What is he, what is he referencing? It says, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, house with the brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands, persecutions, and in the world to come, shall life. So great. These are the reference to the disciples that actually think about what they want to see. They've given up their lives, they're fishermen, you know, all the same gang, the story, whatever they're doing. And with the possibility they can't believe they're not to come and follow him in the gospel. So they don't know what he's going to have. And he tells them. So from a spiritual standpoint, Jesus understands the kingdom is about to be realized. And when they come into the kingdom, they're going to receive all these blessings. You're going to have a new, you know, new family. 
And how many times have you as a preacher went to another state and stayed with a brother and sister, you know what I mean, <laughs> to, to visit their congregation, you know, we have family all across the world now. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. That's one of the blessings that we have, brother. <laughs> one of the best blessings that we have. You know, although we may lose some friends and family members simply because we found the truth and committed our lives to obeying Christ, we will receive a much, much bigger family in the process. You know, when I look around and, you know, uh, think about the congregation here before news, I have aunties and uncles and cousins and <laughs> brothers, sisters, you know, all kind of family here. Uh, at the congregation. Uh, for the mic. Yeah, sometimes you look at it as from the standpoint of the preacher, but I mean, even when Ronnie and I traveled, we, we left, when we left here during one of the, the hurricane drives mm -hmm. and went to another city, uh, worship, or so went to Bible study there that, that um, evening, and they say, you know, we're in someone's home eating, you know? <laughs> And one time when I went to um, uh, Christiansburg, and they said, we like to get out there. You know, they invited us into our house. We stayed the weekend, you know, overnight in his, in his home. Yes, so, like you said, you know, our families are grown. Amen. Yes, sir. We are all bonded by the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. Literal family. Yes, sir. And that is definitely one of the blessings that can only be found in Christ. And of course, uh, we make it our aim to teach our family, friends, and neighbors so that they too may receive those same blessings. Jesus also goes on to say that we will ultimately receive eternal life by obeying him, and you cannot get any bigger blessing than heaven being your eternal home. Revelation 2.10 says, if we remain faithful unto death, the Lord will give us a crown of life. Again, the idea here is when we obey the gospel and continue obeying his commands throughout our Christian walk, the Lord will give us an incorruptible crown. Now, in looking at Mark 10 30, we also see where Jesus mentions persecution in the same breath as gaining all these other benefits by obeying Christ. Now, some would find that strange, but is persecution considered to be a blessing? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's read what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 through 12. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. <clears throat> Keep that question in mind. Persecution or blessing? If I can read it there for Matthew 5, 10 through 12. <clears throat> Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Blessed are you when a man shall revile you and persecute you and shall all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Amen. So we see Jesus then mention persecution here by a patent state. Brethren, if we are going through persecution or upholding the name of Christ, we need to consider ourselves blessed. You see, the fact of the matter is that we will suffer regardless of who we are or what we believe in. But with that being said, I would much rather suffer with Christ than to suffer without him. 
Jesus never said this Christian walk would be easy. Brother Greg. <laughs> Persecution to benefit yourself and grow spiritually while being in Christ. Uh, with Christian. <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking like that's one of the ways your commitment is really established to, to Christ is when you go through that. Yeah. Sometimes we think we can be faithful or we think we're prepared when you go through it and provide how to stay faithful. It just enhances your commitment. Yes. And yeah. amen. Great point. Excellent point, brother. Excellent point. Yes, persecution is most certainly a blessing. Um, like, like, like Brother Greg said, we typically grow up of it that way because we uh, typically think of things that, that make us feel good, or, you know, that we count as a blessing. You know, a lot of times it's something that's monetary, you know, <laughs> that nothing have to do with spiritual things. But persecution is most certainly a blessing. Um, this moment. I was going to say, I really appreciate the conjunction. The word with in the sentence that they mark at the time of the service. The word with means not with, you know, this situation will come with the person. Like, a lot of times, you know, the way movies will project Christian lives, like, we are hard, you know, to all think great. With those that we, you know, we gain a family, we gain a home, yes. we gain, you know, a prize, but you also will get. This also comes with that. Yeah. We need to be prepared to realize you know, with the reality of that. Yeah. Yes. There will be there will be persecution that comes with it. Um that we have to count it as a blessing, you know, uh, when we suffer for Christ's sake. Jesus would say to the apostles in John chapter 15, verses 18 and 19, if the world hate you. Ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. In 2 Timothy 3.13, Paul says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Once again, brethren, the Christian life is not easy, but in the same breath, it is the absolute best life one can live while here on this earth. What's up? And may we never take these blessings for granted. So many believe that we should not follow Christ for the rewards he promises. It should not be our sole purpose, but Jesus did not respond to Peter by chastising him or telling him not to worry about it. But rather Christ told him so he would know so that he would be encouraged and have hope. There are several scriptures in God's word that gives us this same encouragement, and we're going to read a few. Let's uh, read 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Read what Peter has to say. <clears throat> 1 
First Peter 1, 3 through 5. If I get a reader there. <clears throat> Blessed be the God and God of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope mm -hmm. by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that they not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Amen. Thank you, Brother Matt. And now let's turn to the John 14, verses 1 through 3. John 14, 1 through 3. We'll read it there. <clears throat> Heard your words here. John 14, 1 through 3. Let your heart be, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are made a mansion. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may also be. Brethren, obeying the Lord does not come without reward. The Lord has already assured us that when we obey him, heaven will be our home. Comments or questions before we move on to our second point here? Comments or questions? <clears throat> All right, let's get back to Matthew 20. Matthew 20, and then we'll go through verses 1 through 16, and we'll talk about the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. Matthew 20, we'll read verses 1 through 16. We're going to kind of break it up here a little bit. Uh, before we read the text, uh, we want to keep in mind that uh, in this parable, Jesus is the owner of the vineyard. Uh, Christians are the laborers. Uh, the vineyard represents a Christian's life and service to God, and the wage is the reward at the end of life. So that's the things to keep in mind and, uh, as we put this passage here in context. Um, let's read Matthew 20, verses 1 through 10. If I get a read it from Matthew 20, verses 1 through 10, we'll go over those passages, and then we'll read verses 11 through 16. <laughs> For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man in his household, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And when he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth hour, the ninth hour, and did likewise. And in about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle, and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They said unto him, Because no man hath hired us. We, he said unto them, Go ye also unto the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that ye shall receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto the steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when he had came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. Thank you, Brother Bob. So we see here that the main focus in this passage is the kingdom of heaven. And as the passage continues, Christ will go on to show in the parable how the owner went out to the markets and hired laborers to work in the vineyard. And they were hired in different parts of the day. But notice how the owner hired individuals to work. He doesn't expect to have lazy, indifferent, uninterested laborers in the vineyard. Likewise, the Christian should always be at work. We cannot uh, check out of Christianity. Paul says in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you represent your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, that ye represent, uh, excuse me, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, with that being said, I pose a question. What are some ways that we can uh, work within the vineyard? What are some things that we can do? What are some ways in which we can work with other things. Why do you work with me? <laughs> evangelism. Evangelism. Amen. Yes, this one. Evangelism is definitely one. Benevolence. Benevolence. Yes, but uh, uh, definitely things we need in this world right now. Anyone, anyone else? Prayer. Prayer. Amen. Amen. Encouragement. When people are working, you want to encourage them that they continue that same zeal and passion along the way that they don't get mentally fatigued. Yes, encouragement. How important is encouragement to others who may be, you know, um, doing a lot of work within the congregation? You know, how important is that encourager? You know, it's just as important as that person who's doing all the work, you know, to keep them going, you know, keep that fire going. Now, of course, you know, oftentimes the work that a Christian does, um, Often it often goes unnoticed. Everyone isn't going to see, you know, the work you put in uh, into denying yourself daily and growing to develop spiritually um, and uh, a spiritual mentality. Everyone isn't going to see the hours of study you put in. Everyone isn't going to see how many times you uh, visited a brother or sister who may be um, struggling spiritually or physically. Everyone isn't going to see the personal Bible studies that you have with individuals and brethren. It's okay, because for the Christian, it doesn't matter if anyone sees it. Christianity isn't about gaining fame or world-renowned notoriety for doing what is right. That is not why we do this. We do the work because we love our brothers and sisters. We do the work because we love our fellow men. We do the love because we do the work because we love God. And brethren, if no one else sees the work that we are doing in the vineyard, the Lord does. The Lord sees our efforts, all of our deeds. He sees everything that we put forth in service to him. Let's turn and read what Paul says in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Let's read what Paul has to say in Galatians Chapter six, verse one. And then we'll get back, get back to our parable here. <clears throat> Galatians six, six and verse nine. Paul says, "You know what? Just good. Let's go back. Um, let's read verses eight through ten. Let's read eight through ten. So." Of the plant be corruption, but he who sold to the spirit shall of the spirit be life and life. And it was not to be very well doing, for in due season we shall be, if we do not, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto all in the house of faith. Amen. Let us do good, brother. <laughs> Good. Let's not grow weary and well doing for due season we shall be if we faint not. <clears throat> now, getting back to Matthew um, chapter 20. Getting back to Matthew chapter 20. <clears throat> so, let's talk about the uh, hours here that Jesus lists. Um, get back there. Let's talk about the hours that Jesus lists here. So, when he mentions the term early in the morning, you know, that time would be around 6 a.m. Uh, the third hour would be around 9 a.m., represents 9 a.m. Sixth hour would be noon. Uh, the ninth hour would be around 3 p.m. And all of the workers uh, would work until the 11th hour, which would, was 
around 5 p.m. So there were workers that uh, worked different shifts, uh, the longest being from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., and the shortest being 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Now, with that being said, how much money did Jesus pay each worker? Same. Was that both? Same. The same. They were the same. Every worker received one penny. They all received the same amount. Now, why is this significant and what is Jesus teaching us with this parable? Jesus is trying to teach us that every faithful Christian in the Lord's church will receive the same reward, reward in the end. No matter how long the service, uh, Paul compared the service to God as a course uh, or a race in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. And the fact of the matter is that some will enter the race and run one-fourth of a mile or a lap, and others will run 20-plus miles. But the point is that we will all get the same reward when our race is over, if we remain obedient to the Lord. Now, when these workers receive their wages, how do you think they react? Let's read verses 11 through 16. I'm going to read it for 11 through 16. <laughs> choice of what he would pay everyone, and they have agreed to it in Matthew and verses 13 and 15. He would then go on to ask, is thine eye evil because I am doing And he ends the parable by saying, the last shall be first and the first last, for many be called, but few are chosen. Comments or questions before we move on to our conclusion here in the last day. Any comments or questions before moving on? One of the would be a lesson that you can get out of this. I think the different hours of the day could represent the Jews and their faithfulness when you find favor now, all the way up to the land. Yeah. The eleventh hour could signify them bringing in the Gentiles and them also receiving that. They could, Jesus is preparing them for this type of attitude that's going to be showing up later on. Yeah. But we also could do the same thing with thinking that a 90-year-old person getting baptized and dies the next day inherits the same reward as somebody that's been working since they were 13 yes. in the vineyard. So it's the promise is there. We all know it. It's all given to us the eternal life. What more could you want yes. than that? The blessings of God. Yes. All of that's available to anybody, and that should please everybody. Amen. Amen. And look, look what God gave up so that we could receive those benefits. Look what He gave up. And the outline did go into that too, but how the Jews and the Gentiles, uh, what kind of Kind of mingled into this lesson, you know what I mean? But that's a deep study. I didn't want to be up here for two hours. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that was, man, yes. Excellent point. Thank you, Brother Mike. Brother Mike? Yeah, to take it back a little bit, I say we actually had an example of a man who was baptized, who was uh, an event to the VA hospital. Yeah. And um, we finally got him baptized. Yeah. Uh, it took a lot of work to do it, but they got him baptized. Wasn't too long after that, he passed. Wow. So wow. instead of being, you know, infuriated, because, you know, oh, he didn't get to work in the day, no, we rejoiced. He's doing the same thing. Kind of like the people on the cross, you know, just in time, he, you know, repented, 
Yes, you know, that's what we rejoice. That's what we rejoice. Amen. We rejoice when we see brethren go to be with the Lord. You know, it's a bit, it's a bit of sweet uh, moment knowing that we won't have them here on this earth anymore. You know, we won't get to be with them physically and see them and talk to them and hug them. You know, I get to show them our love, but ultimately we know where they are. <laughs> We, we, should, we should rejoice in that in the same breath, you know, knowing that they're going to be with the Lord. You know, that's 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 our whole aim, you know. Our whole aim is to make it there and uh, have heaven to be our home. And we are to encourage our other brothers to get there as well, you know, our fellow man as well. <clears throat> so in conclusion, you know, what is it that we can take away uh, from today's lesson? Well, We've learned that when an obedient Christian passes from this life, that they will receive the same reward no matter how long their service. And brethren, what the reward it is, everyone who has obeyed God will get the same reward in heaven. But before any of that starts, you have to first become a Christian, and you become a Christian by obeying the gospel. That is your first step in obedience to the Lord. <clears throat> you have to hear the word of God and accept it as truth, Romans 10, 14, and 17. You have to believe and have faith, Hebrews 11, 6, John 8, 24, Acts 16, 31. You have to repent and turn from your old way of life, Acts 17, 30, Luke 13, 3 and 5. You have to Romans 10, 9, Matthew 10, 32, and 33. And you have to be baptized for the remission of your sins. Acts 10, 48, Mark 16, 16, Acts 2, 38, and 1 Peter 3, and verse 21. This is when your Christ adds us to his body. There is no other way. Once we are in Christ and we are added to his body, and spend the rest of our days in obedient service to him, heaven will be our own. <clears throat> Thomas, a question for we do. So no, the sad part is that those who came in first, they murmured against the human of the house. Yes. And what you learn in God's word, God doesn't like murmur. No. And who, who are any of us to murmur against God? As he chooses how to give this gift to anyone. Yes. And so we ought to just be thankful that we're accepted. That's right. Brother, he came in the first round or the last round. Yes. And we ought to be thankful that the person that comes in at the last, that they did decide to come in. Yes. Yeah. And that's, as Bob was saying, Mike, that's when we reach the goals. Yeah. I don't care if you're 25 or 95. If you have enough in you to know what the gospel means and you can obey it from the heart, yes, sir. we truly rejoice when you obey. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad you offered the invitation because that's the higher end of the vineyard. Yes. If it would be like if I decided to walk into the vineyard and work without being hired. Oh, yeah. Do I get the reward? No, because I wasn't hired. That was a great I'm glad you closed with that. That's excellent. Thank you, Brother Bob. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and attention and comments, questions. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate your time here for those who are joining us online. Uh, that concludes our lesson. We will begin our worship services here shortly at 11.